Have you ever felt a cold breath on your neck when you were all alone? Or maybe you've heard a whisper of your name in an empty room, sending shivers down your spine. Tonight, we plunge into the heart of such chilling encounters, guided by the voices of those who dared to face the unknown. Welcome back to Stories Philippines podcast, where the supernatural meets the everyday. I'm your host, Alex, and tonight, we're not just telling ghost stories, we're unraveling the threads of Filipino folklore, history, and belief that weave these encounters into the fabric of our culture. But before we begin, let's consider something unique to our culture, the concept of PASMA, could this belief in the disruption of energy, brought on by sudden temperature changes, hold the key to understanding some of these eerie experiences? Could our ancestors' interpretations of the world around them offer a glimpse into the realm of the unseen? In the Philippines, we've always had a deep respect for the delicate balance between the hot and the cold, the seen and the unseen. Pasma, the belief that sudden shifts in temperature can disrupt our body's energy flow, leading to illness or misfortune, is a testament to this. Imagine washing your hands with cold water after ironing clothes could invite negative energy, a spiritual imbalance. This might seem like an old wives' tale to some, but think about it. It's a cultural lens through which we view the world, a way of explaining the inexplicable. Just like the evil eye in other cultures, Pasma reminds us that our actions can have unseen consequences, echoing in the spiritual realm. Tonight, we'll explore haunted hospitals where the echoes of suffering linger, schools where youthful energy intertwines with ancient spirits, and homes that harbor secrets within their walls. We'll delve into the historical context that might explain these hauntings, connecting the past to the present, the living to the departed, So gather close, listeners, and prepare to be chilled to the bone. Light a candle, say a prayer, and let's journey together into the shadows. Our first stop takes us to the hallowed halls of San Mateo General Hospital, a place where life and death dance in a delicate balance. Imagine the silence of the night shift, the sterile smell of antiseptic, the distant hum of medical equipment. It's in this setting that our first storyteller, a pharmacist, encountered the inexplicable. Every night, as the clock struck midnight, he would see them a young child, no more than six or seven, standing at the end of a long, dimly lit corridor, and a shadowy figure lurking behind, always just out of focus. At first, he dismissed it as fatigue, the tricks that an overworked mind can play. But the sightings persisted, growing more vivid, more unsettling. The child, he said, seemed lost, with a look of sadness in his eyes. The shadowy figure, on the other hand, exuded a chilling presence, an ominous aura. It wasn't terror that he felt, he explained, but an overwhelming sense of dread, a cold wave washing over him. Hospitals, especially those with long histories, often become repositories of energy, of emotions, San Mateo General, built during the Spanish colonial era, has witnessed countless moments of pain, suffering, and loss. Could it be that these lingering emotions, these imprints of the past, manifest as ghostly apparitions? Our next story from San Mateo General comes from another pharmacist, who experienced something even more unsettling. Night after night, he would hear footsteps ascending the stairwell, always leading to the office of a recently deceased senior staff member. He initially brushed it off, assuming it was a colleague working late. But the footsteps persisted, always at the same time, always with the same destination. Driven by curiosity and a growing sense of unease, he decided to investigate. But each time, the stairwell was empty, leaving him with only the echo of those phantom footsteps. 
Could this be a residual haunting, a ghostly replay of a familiar routine? Perhaps the spirit of the deceased staff member, so dedicated to their work, still walks those stairs, drawn back to the place they devoted their life to. Our final tale from San Mateo General comes from a nursing student who witnessed something truly chilling in the emergency room. Late one night, she saw a young boy in a red shirt and checkered shorts standing near a patient's bed. He seemed peaceful, almost serene. The next morning, she recounted her experience to her colleagues, only to discover that a child matching that exact description had passed away in that very room just hours earlier. The realization sent a wave of chills down her spine. It's as if the boy's spirit, still lingering, had come to say a final goodbye. These encounters blur the lines between life and death, offering a glimpse into a realm beyond our understanding. And in Filipino culture, children are often believed to have a heightened sensitivity to the supernatural, their innocence allowing them to perceive what adults cannot. From the hushed corridors of the hospital, we move to the bustling hallways of San Mateo High School, where youthful energy and ancient spirits collide. Imagine a typical classroom scene students chatting, papers rustling, the teacher trying to maintain order. But on this particular day, something extraordinary happened. A student suddenly displayed unnatural strength, their voice morphing into something unrecognizable. It was as if they were possessed by an unseen force. The incident sent shockwaves through the school, with whispers of a vengeful spirit spreading like wildfire. It was said that the spirit, angered by the student's disrespect, had chosen this dramatic way to make its presence known. Years later, another student in that same classroom reported doors opening and closing on their own sudden drops in temperature, and an oppressive atmosphere. It seemed the spirit's energy still lingered, a reminder to show respect, to acknowledge the unseen. Schools, with their mix of vibrant youth and historical significance, often become hotspots for paranormal activity. Could it be that the emotional intensity of these spaces, the echoes of laughter and tears, create a fertile ground for spiritual encounters? Our next story takes us to a high school retreat, a time for reflection and bonding. But for one of our listeners, it became a night of unexpected encounters. Late at night, while everyone else slept, she saw a nun walking slowly between the rows of beds. The nun's presence was both calming and eerie. She didn't seem to notice the students, lost in her own world, as if searching for something or someone. The next morning, she shared her experience, only to discover that other students had seen the nun as well. The retreat, meant to be a time of spiritual growth, became an unforgettable encounter with the unknown. The figure of the nun holds a powerful place in Filipino culture, a symbol of faith and devotion. Could her appearance be tied to the deep Catholic roots that have shaped our society? Or is it a manifestation of something more ancient, a connection to the spiritual guardians of the land. And now we enter the most personal space of all the home, a place where we seek comfort and safety, but sometimes the spirits follow us home. Before we dive in, be sure to follow the Stories Philippines podcast and share it with your friends, family, and colleagues who crave thrilling tales. Our episodes are filled with suspense and excitement, guaranteed to keep you on the edge of your seat. Sharing our podcast not only helps us grow, but also spreads the joy of storytelling to others who appreciate a good thrill. Whether you're on a commute, working out, or unwinding at home, our stories are the perfect companion. And if you or someone you know has an amazing story to tell, we'd love to hear it. Your personal experiences and unique tales add immense value to our community. Reach out to us via the links in the show notes. 
We can't wait to hear from you and possibly feature your story in an upcoming episode. Thank you for joining our storytelling journey. Now, back to the show. One of our listeners shared a chilling experience that left her feeling vulnerable in her own bedroom. She awoke in the dead of night to find a lady dressed in black standing at the foot of her bed, staring intently at her. This terrifying encounter was just the beginning. She began experiencing recurring episodes of sleep paralysis, each time accompanied by the lady in black, watching her, looming over her. The feeling of being trapped, unable to move or scream, while a shadowy figure invaded her most private space, was utterly terrifying. It was as if the lady in black was a harbinger of these episodes, a dark entity that haunted her sleep. Now, sleep paralysis is a fascinating phenomenon, often blurring the line between dreams and reality. But when combined with our cultural beliefs, with the stories we've grown up hearing about supernatural beings that visit us in the night, it can become a truly terrifying experience. This listener's story reminds us that sometimes, our deepest fears take root in the shadows of our own minds, amplified by the whispers of our cultural heritage. Our next story takes us to a university dormitory where two cousins shared a room and a series of unsettling experiences. Every night, as the clock struck 3 a.m., they would be awakened by strange noises scratching sounds, whispers, objects moving seemingly on their own. The disturbances became so frequent that they resorted to a traditional Filipino remedy spreading salt around their room creating a barrier against evil spirits. While the salt seemed to offer some protection, the eerie feeling persisted. It was as if something or someone was trying to communicate with them, using the witching hour to make its presence known. Though frightened, the cousins found comfort in knowing they weren't alone in their experiences, their bond strengthening in the face of the unknown. The use of salt as a protective measure is deeply ingrained in Filipino culture, a practice passed down through generations. It's believed to disrupt negative energy, creating a safe haven from malevolent spirits. This simple act connects us to our ancestors, to their wisdom and their understanding of the unseen world. Our final story tonight takes us to a family who moved into a newly built townhouse unaware of the secrets hidden within its walls. Soon after settling in, they began experiencing a series of unsettling events, unexplained bruises, frequent falls, objects vanishing and reappearing in unexpected places. Sensing a supernatural presence, they sought the help of a faith healer who revealed a startling truth the Black Dwarf had been disturbed by the construction of their home. This mischievous entity angered by the intrusion, was making its displeasure known. The Faith Healer performed a series of rituals to appease the Black Dwarf, offering respect and seeking forgiveness for the unintentional disturbance. Gradually, the disturbances subsided, and the family learned a valuable lesson even in the modern world. We must respect the unseen inhabitants of the land, acknowledging their presence and seeking harmony with the spiritual realm. The concept of dwarfs is deeply rooted in Filipino folklore. These elemental beings, guardians of nature, can bring both blessings and misfortune. Respecting them, acknowledging their presence, is crucial for maintaining balance in our lives and in our environment. As we reach the end of our journey tonight, let these stories linger in your mind. From hospitals to schools, from dormitories to homes, the supernatural world seems to intersect with our own in ways we may never fully understand. The Filipino concepts of pasma, the protective power of salt, the belief in entities like the Duwendi, these are all threads in the rich tapestry of our culture, shaping our understanding of the unseen. Listeners, these stories remind us to approach the world with respect to acknowledge the unseen forces that may surround us. Whether you believe in spirits or not, 
The power of belief itself is undeniable, shaping our experiences and our interactions with the unknown. So the next time you hear a creak in the night or feel a sudden chill, remember these stories. Keep your minds open, your hearts brave, and always keep listening. And if you have a chilling tale of your own, a brush with the supernatural, we'd love to hear it. Share your experiences with us and help us explore the mysteries that lie hidden in the shadows. Don't forget to check the show notes for links to support our podcast. Your contributions help us continue bringing you these spine-tingling tales from the heart of the Philippines. Thank you for joining me on this journey into the unknown. Until next time, stay curious, stay safe, and may your dreams be free of ladies in black.